So welcome everyone. Uh, it's good to see you, all of you here, and we can even overcome our problems with the presentation. Um, and we can start. Um, I don't know if anyone heard today's keynote speech uh, about WEX. Anyone can raise a hand if you've seen. Yeah, awesome. Anyone have been to, what was the name of the talk? Uh, we had? Uh, Ita, from Itai and Tadi, the talk was Scan, Patch, and Vex. Just yeah. previous one. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay, great. Uh, I'm really happy about it because, guys, you are hearing the next step in this, the same theme, the same uh, uh, um, train of thought, uh, I would say. So we are going to, let Shlomo, let, I will let you introduce yourself first. Sure, so I'm Shlomo. Uh, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. I work for CyberArk as a maintainer for Conjure, which is an open source secrets manager uh, for DevSecOps. I'm also a contributor to the CNCF Tag Security, which you've heard a bunch about during the keynotes, uh, as well as being the co-lead of the OWASP Cincinnati chapter and uh, one of the maintainers of the OWASP Cheat Sheets series. Um, and a father of one and a friend of Ben. Yeah. So, hey everyone, uh, just a short intro about myself. I'm Ben, uh, CTO and co founder at Armo, Kubernetes security startup. Uh, uh, um, you're more than welcome to visit us at our booth here. We are gold sponsors of this event, but this is not the reason why I'm here today. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of Q the Cubescape project, the CNCF Sandbox. Uh, we are going to talk about it a lot today. Um, and, uh, you know, beyond what Shlomo said also, that, uh, you know, active, very active in, in CNCF and father of four, uh, plus a dog uh, uh, at home, um, we, are, we came to talk to you about VEX. And, and uh, just like an intro, those who, are, uh, who haven't heard about Cubescape before, Cubescape is a Kubernetes security uh, uh, project, uh, was contributed uh, by RMO to CNCF uh, two years ago. We are in CNCF Sandbox. Uh, and we are going for uh, incubation uh, this year. We applied for TOC and we are doing scanning, uh, security scans around uh, your clusters. We are using, uh, we, we are tapping into eBPF streams, which we are going to talk about a little later today. Uh, we are also the, there to do runtime detections on you know, security events inside your cluster. So this is a very cool uh, uh, security project uh, you should uh, look on. Um, do you want to so I'm going to talk you about what is the uh, agenda for us today. Uh, we'll go through about S-bombs and VEX. I hope that we'll like, I will be able to run through it because I guess most of you already heard a lot of, uh, about it these days. And then we'll go into interesting parts, okay, of how, where VEXs are coming from and, uh, and how we can be more active to generate meaningful VEX documents using uh, Cubescape. Uh, and then Shlomo is going to take over and we'll talk about how he and myself turned into this cool Cubescape feature into a GitHub action, which you can like use in your projects, in your environment, and easily get uh, generate meaningful VEX documents based on your uh, workload behavior. So, um, you know, as we see today, uh, and you know, we are here at Cloud Native Security Con. A lot of discussions were about, uh, uh, you know, the way that softwares, modern softwares, are constructed. And there is no, you know, no question about it that even not in open, not just in open source projects, but in the general industry, uh, all the software products are containing a ton of open source input. We are building softwares the way uh, uh, we are. I, you know. And my origin line from electrical engineering, not from software. And we used, I use always to try to, um, you know, use this electrical engineering ideas when I explain software. And you know, when we are looking at software components, we can tell them it's like ICs, like integrated circuits that like dedicated to to solve a specific problem. And also in software, we are using all these uh, open source projects and uh, and uh, components that to build even closed source environment. And we sometimes we get lost of actually what we are using in our environment, and and this is a, a you know a, a major problem. So S bomb is here to uh, S bombs are here to mitigate this. S bombs are here to say when I'm doing a, a software product, 
actually what is the parts that are inside that software product, what I've used uh, during making that sausage. So if really, you know, we are talking about software and uh, software is the sausage, okay, that what are the, uh, what are the ingredients of, of that sausage is actually the, the SBOM. So uh, the way it, there are multiple reasons, okay, look why SBOM is useful. Uh, you know, um, it's, in general, it's a good idea to know what you're actually using, right? But, but if you are, uh, uh, if you are a software render, one of the major use cases of SBOM is to understand what are your exposure to vulnerabilities in your environment. And the way SBOM is used to, uh, uh, to help you with that is simply taking all the software packages in their uh, current versions and they are cross uh, 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 queried against vulnerability databases. So, if a vulnerability database is looking like uh, uh, um, in a way that every record says that there is a software component in a very specific version and there is a vulnerability inside that and this every record looks like that and the SBOM is just like an enumeration of all your software packages, then it's really clear for how you can cross query it and build a list of all the vulnerabilities that are affecting uh, 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 your environment. And this is actually what uh, static scanners are doing. So when you are doing st using uh, uh, Trivi, you're using Gripe, you're using uh, other com commercial products, what they're essentially doing is that if you're not coming with your own SBOM, but you're like you coming your software product, they create the list of the, uh, the SBOM they think you have, uh, and then they are cross, you know, cross uh, querying it against vulnerable databases and creating a list of, uh, of vulnerable things in your environment. So, the problem with that is, is, you know, in general, the idea is that, that this is a very, very good thing to do, and, and we, you know, the, all the uh, industry started to go down this road, but as it turned out that today we created, I'm sorry to say this, uh, a beast. Uh, we created a beast we cannot manage because, uh, you know, today everyone is, who is involved in any kind of security compliance framework and need to do security compl compliance, I would talk to ISO, PCI DSS, you're required to manage in your environment all the vulnerabilities. And the way to do it is uh, to implement it is actually like doing these scans and you're getting the, the output of, the, of these scans and you're like just, no way you really can manage, uh, you know, not just automatically, but in general you cannot manage you know, thousands of vulnerabilities inside the, uh, in, in, inside the live deep, uh, environment and when, you know, every day you get new vulnerabilities outside. So it's, it, it's something that is really, uh, 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 you know, really a problematic uh, uh, for, uh, I think, for the whole industry. But let's go, you know, let's go back a little bit of why we started to do this thing. And the original idea here was really to, uh, uh, we wanted to know what kind of potential exploits are existing in, your, in our environment, right? The whole idea, all the vulnerabilities, S-bombs, vulnerability scanning, the whole idea was to find out where are my risks, real risks, not things that, my, uh, that are not risks, but we wanted to like, create this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, system where we can understand that how an attacker can exploit uh, uh, something in our environment. And to, t to tell the truth, vulnerabilities, especially vulnerabilities that are returned by uh, the vulnerability scanners, are definitely one not equal to, uh, to exploitable uh, uh, things in your environment. So I don't want to go this deeper, but I think that all of you who are here, we are in a conference where uh, people are coming from mostly from security background, and you understand that this is not the, these two things are not the same. And, and when we do the researches, and I talked about this, we are overwhelmed that, look at these uh, statistics that from, you know, uh, uh, stock images uh, from this well-used, uh, 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 well-known uh, project are coming with hundreds of not more vulnerabilities out of the box. And these are the latest, uh, 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 latest image releases. And the reason uh, at Cubescape, we started to do vulnerability scanning as part of the, all the Kubernetes security posture. And we saw that obviously this is something that is un, not manageable. And uh, the idea was that how could we make, you know, create a, a, a product, create an open source product where, where you can 
focus only on the vulnerabilities that are really meaningful for you in your environment, or at least filter down to those that, that might be meaningful. And the general idea was this, that, uh, that today there is a name for it. When we started, there was no professional name. We started to do what is called today a reachability analysis. Uh, uh, reachability analysis is a way to un analyze the, actually the workload behavior in runtime and understand which vulnerabilities can be exploited uh, uh, really in that environment. Now, the way we implemented in Cubescape is that we started to use uh, uh, eBPF observability of what uh, uh, files and, uh, and executables are touched inside the container during the runtime. And it enables us to, uh, to cross-reference these files with the SBOM, we talked about it, and see which are the software packages that are loaded into the memory. And we could, this way we could filter down the SBOM to only to those software packages that not just exist inside the container image, but used during the execution of the container image. And, uh, and this enabled us to create this filtered SBOM, and we fed this filtered SBOM into the vulnerability scanner to cross-reference uh, which uh, of these software packages has vulnerabilities, and to get a short list of, of vulnerabilities which is like more meaningful uh, to us. The way we implemented it is uh, uh, we've used op another great CNCF open source project called uh, Inspector Gadget. Uh, they are EB eBPF uh, uh, observability and security observability uh, uh, platform um, and a very cool project in general. Um, and we, uh, uh, we started to use it to have this observability of what's happening during the runtime of a workload and get the list of, of, uh, of files that are touched during the contain, uh, contain, uh, container runtime. Getting this information to Cubescape together with the SBOM, and we use for SBOM generation, we use Gripe. Uh, uh, we were able to uh, generate a list of what we call relevant vulnerabilities. And this brings us uh, me to this uh, slide where we show actually the connection of uh, the relation of numbers of the general vulnerabilities and what, which one of those are reachable uh, uh, during the execution time. And I will try to show, like, if you see that, like, uh, before and after filtering, you will see that sometimes you don't see the after column because there are just none or, like, so few. I, 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 and, and the ratio is like a huge between, with, between these two. So uh, we had great success. I can say that like as a, th uh, a rule of thumb, 80 to 90% noise reduction uh, in general you know, population. Obviously there are like other mitigating, if you are building your container images from, uh, from scratch and so on, you can like, uh, you will have a, uh, uh, not that uh, impressive ratio, but in general, in the general container image population, we had a great success. So let's, uh, a few words uh, uh, before I, uh, we go to uh, Shlomo uh, about what is VAX, and you heard about it today, VAX, and I go back to the, this whole idea of, uh, of sausage, sausages. Uh, 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 so if, uh, if you know the SBOM is the list of ingredients, VAX should be uh, 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 the list of all the, uh, how do you say, allergy? Allergens. Uh, uh, allergies you, that, you know, that can happen to you. So all these caveats uh, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're talking, uh, eating the sausage. Um, and uh, VEX is really a way to, to communicate uh, uh, vulnerabilities to, uh, to users, th those who are, want to use our software we are creating. Uh, as a, both as open source maintainers or any other you know, use cases, any soft, other software uh, producer can generate to them. And the nice thing is not just that we can list the vulnerabilities, that we can, uh, we can amend to them a status. We can also say what's, what's the effect uh, of this vulnerability on, uh, on the workload, uh, on the uh, software uh, uh, product, and we can say whether uh, 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 you know, this affects uh, the actual product and the exploitable. So uh, the idea here is what happened with VEX is that we are still waiting pretty much for useful VEXs to be generated uh, in general, but also from open source projects. And, and I'm telling you ahead of time, 
that uh, one of the reasons we started departed on this uh, journey with Shlomo is really to help also to open source projects to adopt uh, meaningful VEX generation uh, in a uh, you know in in a automatic and easy manner. So uh, we started with at uh, uh, at Cubescape. We added uh, capability uh, um, to generate VEX documents based on this runtime uh, analysis. Uh, we uh, we started work somewhere around last September, October. It was released something around December uh, uh, to uh, to generate based on this runtime eBPF analysis, generate meaningful VEX documents where not just all the vulnerabilities are listed, but we are telling you which vulnerabilities are affecting and loaded into the memory, so you can filter out uh, uh, easily those that are not uh, uh, not interesting. So uh, I'm going through very fastly on the installation uh, of the cube, of Cubescape. You have to install it as a Kubernetes operator. You have a Helm chart. You should go to uh, 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 Cubescape IO, and we'll see how you can easily install uh, uh, Cubescape in your cluster. And when you are in this uh, example, you are applying a very simple uh, deployment YAML and just querying uh, uh, the Open Vulnerability Exchange container uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, CR. Uh, to get uh, uh, the VEX document. After a while, you know, it takes some time for us to analyze the workload behavior. Uh, but in general, this is it. You can, like, just, you know, grab out of the JSON, uh, you know, which, how many vulnerabilities are affected, how many vulnerabilities are not affected, really, inside the environment. Um, so together, we are integrated it, tried it out with uh, Truvi and Gripe. Uh, with Trivi, we couldn't make it work, and, and anyone who wants to use this, our output with Trivi should go back to that guy at the last line there and, and, and say to him to invest in uh, time in this. Um, but uh, but to, to, be, to be frank, you can see that also uh, uh, Gripe is able to take in the VEX, uh, and you can see that 30, uh, 338 vulnerabilities are, were ignored because VEX said that they are not affecting the actual execution. But to be frank, you can see here uh, uh, also a GitHub issue on Gripe. Uh, uh, the VEX uh, support is somewhat broken also in Gripe, so it's not just Trivi. Uh, 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 it's not working for us right now. Gripe is not working as, as well. Um, but we, are, we have a fix, and we hopefully it's going to be merged really soon. Um, then I will go over to Shlomo. Okay, thank you, Ben. Okay, so um, now that we understand the importance of VEX uh, and how annoying it is when it's not automated to have to uh, you know, generate it yourself, so let's see how we can automate the uh, generation using this new GitHub action that we created. So um, before we show a demo, let's talk about what the GitHub action is gonna need to do. So firstly, remember, since we're doing reachability analysis, we need to run your application to use EPPF to uh, see what it's doing. So hopefully you already have some sort of a test suite or something that runs your app through its paces. Uh, so we, we want the action to do is handle creating the environment with Cubescape running so that you can then run your tests, we can watch what's going on, and then generate the VEX and give that to you as an artifact. Okay, so this is a basic usage example of uh, how you would use, use the GitHub action. Um, it's fairly simple. You'll reference the GitHub action, and the, the, the key here is that you'll give it a Helm chart, which it will then install as your, for your uh, workload, and then there's a test command. So you can provide whatever your tests are. It'll run through those tests. When that finishes, it will then fetch the, uh, from, from Cubescape, it will fetch the, the VEX document. Uh, so here's, here's a concrete example. So I mentioned I, I work on Conjure. Uh, we obviously, being a security product, we'll get, uh, customers will send us scans and say, well, we, we found you know, this uh, Python or whatever vulnerability in your image container, and we have to like, go through and say, well, okay, but we're not really using Python for anything serious, so ignore that one, and we'll ignore that one too, and et cetera, et cetera. So this seemed like a, a perfect opportunity. So. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, I didn't want to put it in the main conjure repository. I just, to keep it separate, I just created a separate repository. Uh, and what I do is I'm pulling in the, the uh, conjure 
Helm chart. And here's the relevant section of the, of the workflow file. So uh, I'm giving it the Helm chart path, which is in this case local. It could be you know, standard uh, URL. Uh, and then I'm giving it the test command, which is in the repository, which I'll show in a second, which just runs it through its paces. And then after that, it'll, it'll export the, the file. Uh, I also mentioned there's a couple of, so there's a couple of optional parameters here. There's the install timeout and namespace. The namespace is just, it's, it could generate its own namespace, uh, but it's gonna use a specific namespace so that my test command can, can know where to find it. And the install timeout is just saying, if, it, if the Helm installation doesn't finish in 120 seconds, just kill it. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you the whole test script, but here's the, here's, here's the basics. Uh, it's basically, I'm just running through the paces of basic conjure, creating, I have a bash script that uh, creates, an, creates an account, stores some secrets, et cetera. You could also, I tested this with running a, uh, a loop in bash to uh, do a bunch of, a, bunch of uh, a little bit of stress testing uh, with HTTP queries, all sorts of things you can do. And once, you know, when I'm make, make, making this, this uh, production ready, what I'll actually do here is run my full suite of end-to-end -end tests. But this is for the purpose of this, I wanted something that ran quickly so I could iterate on it quickly. So, uh, and then when, this script, when that test script completes, the GitHub action will tap Cubescape to pull the VEX. Okay, so let's look at the results of it running. So the action took about four minutes, and um, it created an artifact called VEX documents in GitHub Actions, that's at the bottom there, and uh, it's a zip file. If you open it up, you'll see there's four VEX JSON files. So each one, one is for each container that was running. Um, so you can download these, you can open them, which we'll show soon, but uh, there's, uh, there's uh, another easy way to, to just get a basic, uh, quick overview. If you look in the logs, we have it that it'll, it'll log the number of issues affected and not affected. Uh, and, or you can use gripe like we, uh, mentioned earlier. So now with, with, with gripe, um, gripe, gripe is kind of the way we would, you know, gripe or trivia, this is kind of the way we envision that you would use this. It took a little bit of tweaking to work, as Ben mentioned, there's a bit of a bug going on with the PURL stuff, uh, which again, will hopefully, that's issue uh, 1836, if you wanna track that. Um, but with some tweaking, we are able to get this to work, and uh, hopefully it'll be smoother by, by the time you, get, got, you all get your hands on it. Uh, but this is the result, you can see it's ignoring 245 issues, which is a huge win. Okay, so with minimal effort, we've shown how you can generate VEX documents for your project using an automated GitHub action, using your existing automated test suite. And that is a huge win. I know it is for our project, and I'm sure it is for many others. Uh, so here's my, my call to action to you. Look at your projects and see how VEX can help you to eliminate, to streamline prioritizing uh, vulnerabilities that are actually a risk and not just have this massive pile of vulnerabilities that are completely irrelevant. See how generating this VEX document automatically in your pipeline can reduce the load of irrelevant false positives in your vulnerability scans. And uh, if you have, as you all do, have, have uh, scan results, have it filter, and you can, you'll, you'll see how that can, that can uh, allow you to focus on, on what, what's, actually, what's actually important. Uh, and, and second of all, um, if you think this GitHub action is cool, it's obviously still under development, come contribute, it's open source. Uh, there are definitely limitations we'd like to see some PRs for. Uh, you saw there that it was uh, installed your workload via Helm chart. We'd love to, you know, somebody to add a feature that will allow you to install it using something else or uh, other issues, other things like that. Um, so this is really just the beginning. We, we hope, this, hope this really takes off and, and really improves things and makes things easier uh, for the community to make, to make, uh, to generate VEXs as, as as the, and it was mentioned in the keynote, the, it's alive now, the community is, is coming together, and this is, I think this will be a, a great way to, to help move things forward. So uh, we look forward to seeing what everybody does with this, and uh, we hope to see you at the uh, Cubescape slash Generate Vex Action repository. And uh, with that, we'll take, we'll take questions. Yep.
like a lot of emphasis is on having that test suite, the exercising of the application be super critical here. Um, is that a good read? Uh, and if so, like, what can we do to mitigate that? So um, I will try to rephrase your question. I think I, I understand. So you're saying that, that there was an emphasis here on on the test suite, on integrating with the existing uh, test environment in order to make the, uh, the, the runtime analysis uh, much more uh, precise. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously uh, the Achilles heel of, of, of this analysis, of this runtime analysis is actually seeing uh, uh, the actual product in action, the way it really behaves over time. So, um, so yeah, the reason why we, we created this concept with this action is we wanted to tap into the uh, component system level testing of existing projects because we said that if the, comp uh, the component and system level testing has 100% uh, uh, coverage, which obviously every CNCF project has, <laughs> right? Uh, 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 then, then our, our analysis will be complete, right? Uh, but yeah, you're right. So there is the, the quality of uh, and the depth of the runtime testing and its coverage has a direct effect on how good the runtime analysis is. So if there is a, f uh, 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 a functionality that is not tested, uh, then it might, all the related vulnerabilities uh, might get um, overlooked uh, 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 by the analysis tool. I do, I can tell you that, that um, from our non-scientific uh, research and the project where we've applied this and we looked over the results, they were like, I don't really remember if we had a very clear miss uh, over the time. So it's, I would still say that it's still better to focus on the, you know, the 20% that matters, like the 20, 80% principle here, uh, because you will free up so much time for you in general that you're, set, and you will be able to refocus yourself on, on so many other security things that it's, it's, it's will work. You might overlook something, uh, and I cannot say that there is no chance to it, but still you free up so many time for you to, uh, to address so many other security issues that you will still be uh, making much, you know, better use of your time. Yeah. It may be a net gain in terms of prioritization. Yeah. Did I answer? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good definition. Yeah, sir. Um, why not go to the next step and eliminate everything that's not being used by the application? Uh, one, you reduce the attack surface against things like uh, return oriented programming yeah. attacks. And two, you get a much smaller image now that is easier to ship around. It seems like that would be a natural next step. Yeah. Um, so to be frank, I, I know what you're talking about. So we, in theory, we could like rebuild the container image without all those files that are not used during runtime, right. which is, uh, yeah, uh, there is an open source project, uh, uh, Docker Slim, uh, which, is, which is doing something around that. Uh, we haven't thought in QSAC, we th felt that this is just a little bit of out of scope of a security project. Uh, to rebuild container images, uh, but what we did is um, we, I, I don't, sorry, I don't remember the name, so we, uh, there is another open source project called um, co, 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 Copacetic, yeah, that we can input, like our output can be channeled into Copacetic and it can rebuild the image based on, uh, on, um, on, on the runtime information we collected. So uh, we, we didn't want to solve this specific issue, but we are, you know, we are offering uh, uh, another open source tool we can, you know, we are interfacing with and tell, give it the information it needs to do. 
not wax, uh, I don't remember the exact, uh, I can give me like after the, the talk, if you're very interested, I will look up the, what's the format it takes. Uh, and uh, Docker Slim is another, uh, no, it's uh, not as not it, as far as I know. It does its own reach, reachability analysis, last yeah, I it, checked. Yeah. I think it's called Slim Toolkit now. Slim, yeah, it might yeah. be. There's a slightly larger risk with we're actually removing things because if in your case where something's missed, you, you might break it, but um, yeah, Slim Toolkit is, is definitely worth looking at. Slim Toolkit is the, I believe it's, is Slim. S slim, S-L-I-M, S -L -I -M. I think it's like Slim.ai is the company behind it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, any other questions? Yep. Gripe. So, to be fair, I think that these are the two open source, like these are the two staple open source vulnerability scanner projects I know of, that these are the major ones, I think today in the whole landscape, and they ingest, both of them are, in, uh, are capable of ingesting VEX documents. I think even they are, they can also generate VEX documents not based on runtime analysis, but, uh, but if you are, you know, want to create just VEX statements, uh, they can create for you VEX statements without the, you know, without the vulnerability an uh, runtime analysis. Uh, and uh, I think that Sneak is also able to, as a commercial offering, is able to take in VEX documents, but I'm not 100% sure and don't, don't want to comment it over it. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Last one, yeah. I'm not sure I got the, the, the question. The ability of the server, the workload is actually on a client cloud server, but actually going to run significantly operationally and then generating the best report. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, you're right. Uh, Kubescape, like you can use Kubescape without this GitHub action and just deploy it in any Kubernetes cluster you want. And if you're enabling, we have, uh, since we consider VEX still as a, I would say uh, experimental yeah. uh, 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 data, uh, data and feature. Therefore, it's, it's sitting on, uh, uh, under feature flag. So when you're installing Kubescape operator, you have to tell it to, to install the VEX generation component. But then it, uh, it automatically generates. And it also, the nice part is that, and it relates to the, the question of the gentleman in the last row, that, that, uh, uh, um, that it also uh, updates over time. Uh, the VEX document. So if we identify that after like, after the first 24 hours, there is a new software component loaded into the memory, then the VEX document is updated to include that uh, in the report. So it's, it's all, everything is managed through Kubernetes uh, uh, custom resources and, um, and you know, you can monitor your workloads using that. Okay, thank so, you everyone. So who's going to implement it in his projects tomorrow? We're, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. This was great. Thank you very much.